This video is for anyone who wants a no-nonsense explanation of what data science is and the type of work that data scientists do. Maybe you heard of data science and you want to learn more. Maybe you work with a data scientist and you want to better understand their work. Maybe you even have a goal of becoming a data scientist. This video was made for any of you and probably a whole lot more people out there too. My name is Kenji and I'm a data scientist and content creator. In general, my mission is to help make this field more accessible for everyone. And to be honest, I'm also kind of making this video for my parents, so they'll stop asking me what I do every time they see me. With that being said, let's jump right into it. To understand what data science is now, I think it's important to very briefly understand where it started. Data science has been around for a lot longer than most of us realize. In 1974, the famous computer scientist Peter Naur proposed data science as an alternative name for computer science. And strangely enough, in 1985, C.F. Jeff Wu used this term as an alternative name for a completely different field, statistics, in one of his lectures as well. If it isn't obvious, there's some pretty killer foreshadowing here. The official title of data scientist was first proposed by DJ Patil at LinkedIn, who would go on to become the first US chief data scientist under Barack Obama. While the origins of the field are actually quite old, the true evolution of the field is relatively new. There have been dramatic changes in the way that data science has been done over the last 10 years due to the massive advancements in storage and computing capacity. These rapid changes over a short period of time are why people generally still consider data science a new or evolving discipline. Although it might have been a coincidence that both computer science and statistics were both called data science by, you know, a couple of professors a long time ago, it's become a reality. Data science is now a beautiful hybrid of these two domains. We also need to include a little bit of pure math and and some business slash subject area domain expertise to even things out within the domain as well. Many people still insist that data scientists is calling statistics by a different name. In 1985, that quite possibly could have been the case during one of CF Jeff Wu's lectures. However, I don't believe that that is still true. Because of the huge volumes of data and the increased complexity of computing, many of the problems that data scientists face today cannot be done without the help of computer science and some advanced understanding of the unique domains that they're operating within. So in real terms, what is data science? Enough of the history and the abstract stuff. Data science is an aptly named field. It's a domain where we work with data to generate some form of value, and we use scientific techniques to extract this value. Well, let's expand on that a bit. How do you work with data to generate some value? The first way we generate value from data is through collecting it. While it isn't necessarily a core role of all data scientists, some data scientists use their skill set to collect information. This can be done through building systems for data intake, like web pages or surveys, or it can be done through scraping the internet. Scraping the internet means that you're writing code that collects data from different online sources. Another basic way that a data scientist can create value from data is by organizing it. The vast majority of data in the world is unstructured, meaning that it hasn't been organized into a database. Some data scientists can transform this unorganized data into a structured format, making it far easier for other people to analyze. As part of this process, they can also clean the data by correcting misspellings, fixing errors, identifying duplicate records, and parsing out missing values. A lot of these tasks are handled by data engineers these days, but they still fall under that broader data science umbrella. If you want more details on the specific roles within the data science umbrella, I've linked a video in the top right corner uh, specifically on that. The next way that we create value from data is through analysis. Simple analysis starts with basic statistics. For example, if we wanted to look at the average spending of an online customer versus an in-store customer. Insights like these can help us to make better informed decisions about how we merchandise or how we market or a whole host of other things. Often, the best way to convey these insights is through a beautiful data visualization. We also might want to see if if an ad campaign is effective or not. We could run an A-B test to see which of two ad placements drives the most value. This is where a lot of the science and the math starts to pop up. For something like this, we'd want to use scientific method and concepts like hypothesis testing to evaluate if the differences between groups or campaigns are meaningful. After data analysis, we start to get into what most people consider, you know, the sexy stuff. You know, building predictive models. From past data, data scientists can often build models that predict future outcomes at better than random chance. This allows businesses to hopefully make better decisions about how they'd allocate their resources. For example, let's say we owned a farm and we wanted to build a model to predict how much fertilizer we'd need to purchase each month. Especially if fertilizer has a shelf life, it could save us a lot of money if we predict this amount of fertilizer that we need very accurately. Another example would be if we're looking to franchise a new restaurant. We could in theory build a model that would predict the return on investment 
based on geography, on traffic patterns, and demographics of this new location. The final main way that data scientists create value from data is through automation. If we put some of these models that we're building into production, often they make recommendations at a pace that far exceeds humans. A great example of this would be Netflix. They have machine learning algorithms that recommend you videos in real time. For a person to do this same service, it would take well, not just one person, it take thousands of people and thousands of hours to just constantly recommend these videos. In this case, it takes for Netflix only a few machine learning algorithms to do this almost instantaneously. And these things pay off too. According to some, you know, random article I found on the internet, apparently Netflix recommendation algorithm is worth over a billion dollars per year to the company. So the process in which data scientists drive value from data that I just described is often referred to as the data science life cycle. Most organizations follow this path. They collect data, they organize the data, they analyze the data, they build models on the data, and then they automate or productionize those models. Some companies haven't got to the predictive or the automated part yet, but hopefully they'll be moving and trending towards that path. You're probably thinking, Ken, we get it. Data scientists drive value along this pipeline, but what problems can they actually help solve? What does this mean in real terms? This is a really important question for non-data scientists to understand. There are two main types of problems that data science and machine learning are good at taking on. The first is supervised learning. So supervised learning serves to predict specific outcomes. We wanna predict things like if someone is wearing a face mask or not, or exactly how tall someone is for, for some reason. Supervised learning means that we have data where the outcomes that we wanna predict are labeled. Let's say that we wanted to predict if a papaya was ripe or not. If our papaya data had some characteristics like length, softness, mass, sugar content, and if someone had labeled it ripe, then this could likely be used as a supervised learning problem. More specifically, this would be a classification problem. We're trying to classify if a papaya falls into a ripe or a not ripe category. If we were trying to predict how heavy the papaya is in grams, then this would be what's called a regression problem because we're trying to predict a continuous numeric value. Unsupervised learning is another story. With unsupervised learning, we often don't have predefined categories that things neatly fall into. Instead, we see what data just naturally groups together and we create new categories based on the similarities and differences within those data points. An example would be a simple customer segmentation. Maybe you group customers based on their buying patterns. Then you name those groups based on the similar characteristics of those buying pattern groups. Another form of unsupervised learning is generative, where we're creating text or images from a model that's trained on a massive corpus on just a ton of data. A popular one now is called GPT-3, and it's probably just a little bit outside the scope of this video. You might have also heard of deep learning or artificial neural nets. These are so popular because they can be generalized to solve almost any type of supervised or unsupervised learning task. Let me know in the comments section below if you want me to make a video very similar to this one explaining specifically those concepts. I think it's really important to understand the types of questions that machine learning and data science are good for answering. I often hear non-data scientists speaking about this field as a cure-all or a panacea. Yes, we can do some incredible stuff, but there are still limitations based on the specific types of questions we're asking of the data. I have a great case study of how data science can go wrong with, with poor assumptions that I've linked in the top right corner. So I realize I've mentioned machine learning quite a few times in this video. I've probably said it interchangeably with data science, in fact. A few questions I get a lot are, what is machine learning versus data science? And how do machines actually learn? While I have a whole video that goes more into the specifics of this topic, machine learning algorithms are mainly what data scientists use to build their models. The supervised and unsupervised learning techniques that I listed above are all machine learning. On the other hand, most of the data analysis, data collection, and data cleaning techniques don't fall into that machine learning bucket. For the most part, whenever we're making a model that predicts future outcomes, that groups data points algorithmically, or generates new material, that would be considered machine learning. But where does the learning take place, Ken? Whenever a data scientist builds a model, they'll split their data into a train and a test set. They'll use their train data to teach the model, and then they'll see how their model performs predicting outcomes on the test set. Let's say we wanna build a model that predicts someone's YouTube views based on how many videos that they've made. For something like this, we'd use a machine learning technique called linear regression. With a simple linear regression, training our model is just fitting a line to these data points. One way of training this model is we'd use a flat line, and then we change the slope and the intercept of the model 
to reduce the error or reduce how wrong we were with each of the estimations. That is how our model would learn from this data. In order to make predictions on our test set, we just have to see the value of our line based on the data point we're selecting in our training set. If our model does a really good job at predicting these test values, then we might consider it ready to apply to new data. With model training, you'll hear terms like overfitting and underfitting and bias and variance trade-off. I think these are probably outside the scope of the video, but again, let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a specific video on these concepts. They, they are relatively important, so I'll probably make a video on it anyway, but who knows? You should hopefully understand where data scientists create value, but what tools do they use and what does their work look like? In my mind, the most important tool in the data scientist toolkit is programming. Most data scientists use either Python or R, with Python being generally the more popular language of the two. Other languages are used, like Scala, Julia, even C, C++, but it's usually for specific domain use cases. Data scientists are able to access the data, manipulate it, create visualizations, build models, and, and productionize their models all through coding. Programming is a data scientist's all-purpose tool. However, data scientists also have specialist tools that they use. For getting and manipulating data, data scientists will often use SQL. This allows data scientists to communicate easily with databases where data is often stored. Another specialist tool would be something like Tableau or Power BI, which provide a graphic interface for creating data visualizations and dashboards. For some projects, there's so much volume of data that data scientists need to use more computing power. In these cases, they'll access virtual computers owned by Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. These are also known as cloud providers to run their analysis. The last tool that's becoming increasingly popular is Git. So Git is a versioning tool for people who write code. I have a full video pinned in the top right corner for anyone who wants a deeper dive on that. So we build these cool models, but what does the real end product of a data scientist's work look like? Honestly, this varies pretty greatly by role. Data science deliverables generally come in three flavors. First, they either have a dashboard that guides business stakeholders to their own insights or that conveys information. Second, they have a deliverable that makes a recommendation or a prediction on a specific problem. Finally, they have a trained model that users can get real-time predictions from. It's really important to understand that within this domain, there aren't really ever clear right and wrong answers. There are just shades of certainty and uncertainty. What I mean by that is that a model that we build gives us an estimate about what is likely to happen. The confidence of our model helps us to decide if we should take action or not. In theory, any model can be wrong, even if it's predicting, I don't know, if the sun will come up tomorrow. Most models that we build, especially if they're of the third variety and are automated, need to be consistently maintained, retrained and updated with new data so that they're as accurate as possible. One of the most popular sayings in data science is that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And I think that that's really important to keep in mind. If you find all this very interesting and you wanna become a data scientist, I've linked a video on how to approach learning the field in the top right corner. If just watching this video is enough to expand your knowledge, I really appreciate you sticking with me to the end. Hopefully this helped you to better understand data science and some of the types of problems that data scientists can help solve. If you think this video would be helpful to one of your friends, someone you work with, or someone who's looking to become a data scientist, I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you forwarded it along. Also, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content similar to this, please like and subscribe to my, to my channel. Thank you again for watching and good luck on your data science journey.